boys and girls and welcome to the first virtual assembly of 2022. We hope you've had a great week. We know there's been lots of wonderful learning going on across the school. So a huge well done for coming back, settling in so well and getting right on with your learning. We've got a welcome message from Mrs Mackay this week with a little update about some very important things. We're then going to move on to our choice of the week and then some French revision with Miss Healy. We're going to watch a little video that tells us all about something called ADHD. And then to go along with our Scots theme, because we know a lot of our classes are learning about Scotland in the next few weeks, we have some Scots language to share with you. And to finish off, we have a little story translated into Scots. Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to this week's assembly. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you all had a really good time over the holidays. It's really good to see everyone back in school. I am full of enthusiasm for what is going to happen this term and right up until the summertime because I love the term after Christmas. It's when we really work very, very hard and we have a big focus on how well we can learn and how much we can learn. And it's great to come into your classes as I have been doing last week. I was in all the downstairs classes, all of the infant classes. And next week, I'm coming to visit everybody who's upstairs, all the classes in St Kevin's, primary four, five, six and seven, because it's lovely to see what it's like for you to be in your classes, how hard you work and what kind of exciting and interesting things you learn and that your teachers plan for you learning. So we've got lots of things to do in terms of how we progress our learning. But we've also got lots of things to do in terms of how we progress becoming one school. And I know that we have talked about this before, but when we come to be changing our school name, it's really important that everybody knows that nothing is really going to change. I've said to you before, the boys and girls who go to St Stephen's part of the school continue to go there with their teachers and with me and the management team as your management team and head teacher. And the boys and girls who go to the St Kevin's part of the school will continue to go there with all of their friends in that school, with me and the management team as their head teacher and management team. The way we begin to, or we have started crossing over, we've got boys and girls coming into primary one, into primary six, into primary five, into primary four. We've got boys and girls coming in and out of all the classes in the mainstream, the same as we've now got boys and girls coming into St Kevin's to spend some time. So that lovely opportunity that we all have to learn and work the way that we learn and work best is really being moved forward in a really positive way. I was speaking to some of you about what your thoughts were and an amazing, amazing girl in primary five when I, said to me when I asked her, what, what's the best thing about our two schools being together? What word would you use to sum that up? And she said, equality. And I had said, oh, what do you mean by equality? And she said, equality is not just about women being paid the same as men for the job that they do. Equality is getting the support you need. And I, I was so, so proud of that wee one in primary five because she couldn't sum up better what our school is all about. We all learn differently. We all progress differently. We all grow differently. Some of us stop growing sooner than others and I would be in that category. We all learn in different ways and different styles at different times. But if we're really being equal, if we're really being fair, then whatever you need in order to learn should be there in the type of support. 
and our two schools coming together absolutely embodies and cuddles into embraces equality. We spoke to some very important people in this process about the two schools coming together this week. We spoke to um, inspectors from Education Scotland and they've got a really important part to play in all of this because they like to speak to people. They want to talk to me and to my deputy heads, Mrs McEachran and um, <clears throat> Mrs Gardner. They wanted to talk to some teachers. They wanted to talk to some support for learning workers. They wanted to talk to some of our parents and some of our partners. And they also wanted to talk to some children. And they had some really, really hard questions to ask us. Made me think, made my deputies think, made everybody think. But I think they were very, very happy with what we had to say. So they are now going to write a report and say that they think it's a good thing, but it's not a good thing. And that is the next step in this process. So I will keep you up to speed, but I was very, very proud of everybody and all your teachers and all the support workers and every single person and parent in our school this week, because we have an amazing school family and that is just wonderful. So it is another week, it is another assembly, it is another busy, jam-packed agenda. So, as always, I'm going to see you at the end. So stay tuned, because here comes the next bit. See you soon. So we're now moving on to our choice of the week. It could be a joke or a random fact, an on this day in or a news story. It could be a quote of the week or a sports fact or a movie or music clip or a guess who. And this week, it's a movie clip of the week. And this week, we're going to look at the new Disney film that has been released called Encanto. Some of you might have seen it. Some of you might not have seen it yet. First of all, we're going to watch a little news round clip of a little girl who wrote a letter to Disney campaigning for them to create a Disney princess who wears glasses. We're then going to watch the little trailer for the film and hopefully we enjoy it. Once upon a time, there was a girl with glasses who wanted to change the world. And the presenter with glasses who went to meet her. Why do you think more Disney princesses should have glasses? I feel like there's lots of little girls with glasses who don't feel beautiful and I want there to be a role model for them. You don't really see any sort of like cool main character people in films. Do you think there should be way more main characters who wear glasses? Yeah, yeah. But like, not like all of not, them. You just want, yeah, you just just want like some of them to wear glasses. <laughs> Explain to me, what is this? Who is this? It's what I am as a cartoon princess. Now I know actually what I would look like as a princess. Lori wrote to Disney to ask them why they didn't make princesses with glasses and her story went viral. Your story has had such a reaction over here at News Round. Like, you've got people here saying like, superheroes should wear more glasses, yeah. my dad wears glasses and he looks cool. <laughs> you've had quite a reaction. <laughs> As a result of your letter, um, Disney have actually sort of released um, their own statement. So I'll read it to you. The Disney brand has always been inclusive with stories that reflect acceptance and tolerance and celebrate the differences that make our characters uniquely wonderful in their own way. Disney remains committed to continuing to create characters that are accessible and relatable to all children. After this letter, if you could say anything to Disney right now, what would, you, what would be your response to this? Well, it's not really enough. And why don't you think it's enough? Because they just replied and they don't think they actually did it and they didn't really say Disney Princess. So it looks like Lori hasn't got the fairy tale ending she was hoping for, but there's no sign she's going to give up any time soon.
Mirabel! Delivery! I gave you the special since you're the only Madrigal kid with no gift. I call it the not special special since, uh, you have no gift. Uh, thanks? Colombia! Or no gift, I am just as special as the rest of my family. Who wants more pink? All right, guys, where do I drop the wagon? Maybe your gift is being in denial. <sighs> Bonjour tout le monde. Tout d'abord, je voudrais vous souhaiter une bonne année. Cette semaine, nous allons faire une révision de l'année. Vous pouvez mettre en pratique tout le vocabulaire que vous avez appris en 2021. Au revoir, à bientôt. So as part of our French revision, Miss Haley has prepared a little code cracker sheet about the colours in French. So you have to look at the code and try to crack it. Look at the pictures and the letters that they represent. Try to write the word and watch this little video to help you remember some of the colours in French. Jaune. Jaune. Bleu, bleu. Noir, noir. Vert, vert. Rouge, rouge. Orange, orange. Blanc, blanc. Rose, rose. Brun, brun. Now you may remember before Christmas in one of our assemblies we had a little video telling us all about something called dyslexia. This week we have another little video and it's going to tell us more about what ADHD is. So listen carefully to find out some more information. Hi, we all have ADHD. And we're going to tell you a bit about it. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Did you know that anyone can have ADHD, even adults? About 1 in 20 children have ADHD, which is more than 1 in every class. Someone in your family may even have it too. If you have ADHD, you might feel like you have a lot more energy than others, find it hard to pay attention, get distracted easily, find it hard to sit still, or not shout out or interrupt others. Lots of people feel like this sometimes, but for someone with ADHD, it might feel like this most or all of the time. This can't get in the way of doing important things, like in school with homework and friendships. This can sometimes get them into trouble more than others. Not everyone with ADHD has the same difficulties. ADHD can appear in different ways at different times for different people. That's why sometimes it's hard to tell who has it. Some people may also have difficulties with reading, spelling or being clumsy. Some may have difficulties communicating with people or have bigger emotions than others. Like feeling more worried, sad or angry. Scientists have found that the brains of people with ADHD can work in a special way including parts of the brain that help with things like attention, stopping and waiting before doing things, and organising thoughts or actions. For me, ADHD feels like you're watching TV, listening to music and talking to someone all at the same time. It's really hard to know what to pay attention to. A special doctor can tell if you have ADHD. They will speak to you, your family and your teachers to find out more about you and think very carefully before deciding if somebody has ADHD or not. They will also talk about the type of help you might need. Knowing that you have ADHD can help you and others understand you better. You might need help with things that you find hard and that's okay. It's important to find out what these are and talk to your family, teacher or doctor about it. There are some things that you might be able to do to help yourself with support of your family and teachers. For example, taking breaks or having a chart of what you need to do can help some people. Eating well, trying to get a good night's sleep 
and getting regular exercise is important too. Some children with ADHD need medicine to help with their difficulties and some do not. Not everything works for everyone and nothing works all the time, so it's best to find things that suit you and that you enjoy too. Scientists don't know what exactly causes ADHD yet, but they know that it's complicated with lots of different things acting together, including genes, which are instruction manuals in our bodies that help make us who we are. And the environment, which are the different things that happen to us in our lives. Although it can be hard sometimes, there are some good things about ADHD. It doesn't stop people from achieving their dreams and being successful. Lots of famous people, like some athletes and actors, have ADHD too. In fact, ADHD helps me have amazing ideas. I'm one of the funniest kids in school. I have lots more energy than others. I have fun in everything I do. I can think of more questions to ask teachers than any other person in my class. ADHD is just one part of who you are and it's okay to have ADHD. Find out more about ADHD by going to ncmh.info forward slash ADHD. So over the next few weeks, all of our classes will be exploring Scotland and learning more things about our country. And this week we have got the help of all of Primary 3 and Mrs Gardiner to teach us some Scots language words all about the weather. Good afternoon everyone. The weather is very broad. And then Glasgow is very broad too. And I told you it's bullet stain. It's bolted in Italy. Good afternoon everybody. Today is blow by. Weather is very cold. You better warm. It's like Baltic, but worse. You must not go outside. Get warm and be warm. So bye. Good afternoon everyone. The weather today in Glasgow is very bonny and broad. Today in Edinburgh, it is very Baltic and pure. In Stirling, today it is going to be blow by and bullet stains. Today in Aberdeen, it is going to be bear slim. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is cold. It is snowing. You might want to wear a jacket. Good day, everybody. Today it is very Baltic and there are some bullet stains. So you might want to wrap up cozy or you might be chittering if you go outside. Bye. A huge thank you to Primary 3 and Mrs Gardiner for practising and preparing some weather reports in Scottish language for this week's assembly. They did a super job. And if you want to have a go at learning some Scots language for weather, then here is a little Scots weather dictionary. We'll share it on Seesaw and you can practice recording the weather reports in Scots language. And to finish off our assembly this week, keeping with our theme of Scotland, we are going to listen to a Scots story read aloud. And this story has been translated into Scots and it's called The Tiger That Cam For His Tea. We hope you enjoy. The Tiger That Cam For His Tea by Judith Kerr Translated into Scots by Susan Rainey There was ain a wee lassie cried Sophie and a day she was tacking her tea in the kitchen with her mum. On a sudden there was a chap at the door. Weel, what can that be, I wonder, said Sophie's mum. It canna be the milkman, as he cam the morning. And it canna be the grocer's lad, as it's no his day to come. And it canna be your dad, as he's got his key. We'd better open the door and see. Sophie opened the door and there was a muckle, furry, strip it, tiger. Pair did me, said the tiger, 
but I'm sair hungry. Could I tak my tea here with you? Aye, of course you can, said Sophie's mum. Come awa in. See the tiger cam be in the kitchen and sat down at the table. Sophie's mum said, do you fancy a wee piece? But the tiger didn't attack just the a piece. He took the hail plate of pieces and ate them in a muckle gollop. Goup. He was looking gay hungry yet, says Sophie Rackstoot the scones. But again, the tiger didn't attack just the a scone. He golloped the hail plate of scones. And sign he golloped all the shortbread and all the pancakes, till there was nothing left to eat on the table at all. Say so Sophie's mum said, Do you fancy a wee drink? And the tiger glogged all the milk in the milk jug and all the tea in the teapot. And sign he had a good look round the kitchen to see what other he could get. He golloped all the tatties that were cooking in the pots and all the food in the fridge. And all the packets and pokes in the press. And he globbed all the milk and all the apple juice, and all Dad's best beer, and all the water for the tap. Sign, he said. Money, bro, thanks for my tea. I'll be a wanu. And he shuckled out the door. I didn't ken what to do, said Sophie's mum. I've nothing left for your Dad's tea. Yon tiger has eaten every bit thing in the house. What's more, Sophie couldn't attack her bath as the tiger had drunk in all the water for the tap. Right then, Sophie's dad got home. See, so Sophie and her mum tell him what had happened and how the tiger had eaten all the food and drunk in all the drink in the house. I ken what will do, says Sophie's dad. I've got a bro idea. We'll put on our coats and we'll hang down the road to a tea shop. So they stepped outside, into the murk, and all the street lamps were lighted, and all the Catholics were on, and they dandered down the road to a tea shop. and they had a bra sausage supper and ice cream for their tea. The morn's morn, Sophie and her mum gave the messages and they bought a handle mere things to eat. And they bought a muckle tin of tiger food for buy. Least the tiger came for his tea again. But he didna ever. Well, boys and girls, it's almost time to go home. Remember to take care, to look after yourself and each other, to always be kind and make good choices. And I will see you all on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye.